comfortable. As much as I can be, I suppose. I don't know why they gave you that stupid table. It's not like you have something in your pocket that you put on there at night before you hit the cot. Part of a foundation-wide movement, as far as I understand it. The on-site psych department said that providing us with simple things from the outside would keep us mentally stable and useful for longer, as far as I know. So a tiny table is supposed to keep you emotionally stable. I've been told the foundation approves simple things for our use. Simple, homey touches. No TVs, computers, entertainment systems, or anything fun, really. Security protocols are some bullshit. I guess since I've been kicking around for so long, they thought it'd be just fine drawing the short straw. Seems a bit unfair. It's not much you can do with a table. You know what would be a great homey touch? How about a sink so I can wash my hands after taking a piss? That'd make me feel a lot more human. No kidding. That's gross as hell, man. You would think they'd give you more credit after all the tests you survived. Hook you up with something nice. You haven't been here long enough to figure out how they think, have you? I guess I haven't. And for your sake, you better hope it doesn't sink in. I see how those other guards treat those B-class. Very true. You're one of the good ones, and I appreciate that. Now, as long as the Foundation makes good on their end of the deal and gives you my freedom, this little table will do for now. All right, enough chit-chat. We gotta get you ready for your next assignment brief. Your task today, D-9085, will be to interview SCP-105 using the provided question set included in the briefing packet before you. Upon completion of questioning, you are to deliver the closing message for the encounter as written. Upon final response yielded from SCP-105, you will be given further instructions on how to proceed. Understood? Sure. Sounds simple enough. Just one question, though. What kind of monster am I dealing with today? What is SCP-105? A limited access file has been included in your briefing packet. Please review the provided information now, if you wish. SCP-105 is a female human of European descent. Blonde hair, blue eyes. She appears to be, for all intents and purposes, a normal human being in good health. SCP-105-B is a Polaroid 1-step 600 camera, and appears to be, for all intents and purposes, a normal Polaroid camera operating normally for all persons aside from SCP-105. When SCP-105 holds a photograph taken by SCP-105-B, the photograph changes from a still image to that of a real-time image of the location in question. SCP-105 is also able to reach through the photograph and manipulate objects within reach of the original point at which the photograph was taken. SCP-105 has demonstrated limited ability to manipulate objects through other photographs but can only achieve fine control using photographs taken through SCP-105-B. SCP-105-B and the photographs taken by said camera have no unusual properties when used by any other person. So without her camera, which I assume you have under lock and key, I'm just interviewing an ordinary human woman? Correct. More or less. Class 3 socialization privileges were recently revoked for SCP-105, so she may be irritable or more desperate for human interaction than normal. Don't be baited into a drawn-out conversation. Stick to the questions we've provided, and this assignment should be quick and easy for you. Good deal. Let's get this over with. SCP-105, please state your name. It's just, you know, protocol. My name is Iris Thompson. You can call me Iris if you'd like. Most of the guards in this sector do, the friendly ones anyway. I assume you don't like being called by your number either, do you, Mr. D-9085? Yeah, being called by that designation does get to be a bit dehumanizing. My name's Omar. Nice to meet you, Iris. I'd love to say the pleasure's all mine, but it's often hard to tell in this place. Most things aren't what they seem. First impressions included. Ain't that the truth. Cut the chit-chat and stick to the script, D-9085. 
If you can't follow instruction, we'll find someone else to conduct this interview who will. And there's the tug at your leash. Go ahead. Ask your questions. I'll answer the best that I can. Um, right. Thank you. So, how have you been doing recently? With the protocol changes and all, I mean. Can't say I'm loving it, but I realize I could be treated worse. I do miss the experiments and field work the Foundation used to assign me to participate in, though. They gave me a sense of purpose and helped me learn more about myself and my powers. I understand why it scares them now to give me more experience with such things. But I can't say I understand this new isolation protocol. Not having someone to talk to for so long just really makes someone... So I see the change in your containment protocol took effect about 10 weeks ago. I suppose I'm the first person you've interacted with since then. The first person I've spoken with, yes. I've had some interactions with the guards, but I assume they've been instructed not to speak to or acknowledge me in any way unless absolutely necessary. I got a bit hysterical at one point and sort of freaked out on one guard. I'm not proud of how I acted, but... I found the process of being brutally subdued oddly comforting. At least in that moment, they acknowledge that I still exist, for whatever that's worth. Yeah, I see that incident in your file here. There aren't a lot of strikes on your record. I think that took all the staff by surprise. I surprised myself, honestly. I guess I just hit a bit of a breaking point. It hasn't been great. A breaking point? Have you ever thought about making an escape attempt? No, of course not. I mean, I suppose in dreaming of an ideal world, I imagine myself out there, not here. But with everything that's happened to me, I don't even know what I would do with freedom. There's not anything or anyone out there for me anymore. No one out there for you? Didn't you have any family or friends before, well, before all of this? It's all in my file. Nothing new to the Foundation there. But since you surprisingly seem to care, I have no problem filling you in. And I'm sure the Foundation wouldn't mind having this on the record again, just to make sure they've got all the facts straight. You may proceed, 105. If there's anything these Foundation scientists like in their work with an infinite amount of unknowns, it's confirmation they at least know a thing or two. Anyways, long story short, my one true love is dead, and I was framed for his murder. I was cleaning up around my apartment one evening, just starting to set up some new photos on the wall of my boyfriend and I. Suddenly, one of the photos of him sprang to life as photos I take often do, only this time it was different. I saw a figure approach my boyfriend in the photograph holding up a knife. I tried to stop what I saw coming, tried calling out to him, tried to swat the cloaked assailant away, but my powers weren't as developed as they are now. I was hopeless, I couldn't stop it. I ran to his place as fast as I could, but by then it was too late. The son of a bitch was gone, and I was left holding a dead body of the man I loved. They never found the murder weapon, only me there holding his corpse. And they put two and two together and blamed me for the murder. And when I tried to show them my powers and explain my story... That's when the Foundation showed up. I'm so sorry, Iris. That's even more awful than I could imagine. I doubt it. I mean, it's awful, of course, but with the hell that you D-class are put through, I'm sure that you can imagine much worse. And there's no one else out there waiting for you? Don't you have any friends, family? I was always more of a loner. I didn't have many friends anyway. My family and I were close, 
but the foundation made sure my parents have no memory I ever existed. There is nothing left for me outside of these walls. Why then did you decide to arm yourself in Incident R1300 Site-17 and attempt to escape? I did not try to escape. But you did arm yourself? Well, yes, but the circumstances called for it. I surrendered myself as soon as the Foundation took control of the situation. Recount exactly what you believe happened during Incident R1300 Site-17. Everything went to shit real quick is what happened. I was pulled out of my cell by some guard. He insisted things were getting bad and that they had to move me as quickly as possible. Some group of men, dressed in all black, attacking Site-17, were taking out guards left and right. My escort didn't last long, so I did what I needed to in order to survive. Honestly, prisoners like me did more to protect Site-17 than the Foundation did. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I actually helped the Foundation during the incident. I took out several of the men in black before the elite team arrived to help contain the situation. As soon as the Foundation was in control again, I surrendered peacefully. But by then, things were pretty bad anyway. I suppose that's why they moved me here from Site-17, just until they have everything under control back there? You and the Foundation seem to have differing opinions on how that situation went down. Well, all of the Foundation personnel that were actually there from the beginning aren't around to support my story now, are they? The Men in Black made sure of that. Look. I of all people wouldn't blame you for trying to take that opportunity to get away from this nightmare. Despite what you've told me, I'd imagine you'd still have reason to leave. Maybe to avenge your boyfriend? Or just to clear your name? I am sure there is nothing left of my name outside of these walls and their files. The Foundation doesn't seem like the type of organization to leave loose ends behind. Well... If you can't tell me anything new about Incident R1300 Site-17, what can you tell me about your connection to a supposed Mobile Task Force Alpha-9? I am not familiar with any task force by that designation. The Foundation seems to think you do. Well, the Foundation should know that they have me under lock and key at all times. I only know what they choose to tell me nowadays. Let me level with you here. You know I have no inside knowledge or power over whatever the situation is about. But I've been sent here today to mediate an offer between you and the Foundation. Now, let's suppose this Mobile Task Force Alpha-9 isn't a myth. And let's suppose that a security breach in the Foundation led to your involvement with said task force. The Foundation is fully prepared to offer no repercussions for your involvement and even reinstate your Class 3 socialization privileges in exchange for any information you can bring to light about the situation. Especially the names of any Foundation personnel involved. If you know anything, anything at all, it's not a bad deal i consider taking it if I were you. I don't know how I can elaborate on something I know nothing about. This is the only offer on the table. The Foundation usually gets what they want one way or another. So if you know anything, now's the time to spill the beans. There's no point in trying to fool anyone around here. I don't know what I don't know, and that is all there is to it. Very well, SCP-105. D-9085. Your work is concluded. Please exit the chamber. I am sorry for your troubles, Iris. I do wish you the best. I hope we meet again, Omar. <laughs>